Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners all over the world, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back here with another episode today. Unfortunately, it is not a triple threat. It is a one-on-one match. It is myself, Shant, and Dan, the man with a billion-dollar plan who doesn't give a damn. How are you? Hold on, hold on. Here we go. AWP, acknowledge me. What the hell is wrong with you? I want to be acknowledged. No, you don't do that. You know the mood that I've been in over the last 24 hours. You don't just come on here and do that. I'm sorry. Are you still suffering from a nightmare? So what do you want to talk about? (laughs) I want to talk about WrestleMania The biggest disappointment in human history. We got two nights to talk about. A lot of matches. Both shows, like, we'll do some general stuff right now. Both shows basically structured exactly the same. Exactly the same. Um, Which then begs the question, why don't we just trim some of the fat, do one show? Dan. Uh, Why don't we just trim the fat? Um, You don't necessarily need to, like, I know that you're just trying to shove people into the show. Do multi-person matches. You go back to when we would do a five-hour WrestleMania. Pre-pandemic, you mean? Well, even (laughs) older than that. You go back to, like, the Attitude Era. You had a bunch of matches. If you ever ever read the back of your VHS tapes, you have a bunch of matches, and you have a bunch of multi-person matches. I don't know when we crossed this border into single match, single match, single match, single match, um, which I know that... I'm cheating a little bit. There's a, there's some There's some, here. but yeah. But you you don't need if you're basically just going to have people come for 2 days and give them the exact same show with just different faces, it's kind of annoying. Like I I I even said and that's the other problem with selling the tickets 6 months in advance, roughly, November, yeah. Um is that I, I, I said to somebody, if I had bought a ticket for one night of WrestleMania and it had been night one, despite the tag match, which we're going to get into everything, I'd have been pissed. Yeah. It was a shitty show. You don't know what you're getting. Yeah. And especially because the rumor around the time was Roman Rock. Yeah. So I, I'm sure a lot of people bought their ticket assuming that on night two, that was going to be what you were going to get. Yeah. And then you didn't. Now, granted, this match was intended to be like a good consolation prize. But we'll get into what happened with that as well. Yeah. But anyway, so, yeah. Thir- WrestleMania two nights, 30... What? 39. WrestleMania 39, two nights. A lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so let's hop right in. I'm... Dan the man, I'm the match breakdown guy, the shunt, gonna be our uh, captain at the helm. Let's steer this ship right off the edge of the earth. Or oh, right off the tracks. <laughs> Just like WWE did prepare, last night. preparing for a merger deal with Endeavor. <sighs> uh, so, anyway, I'll, fine, I'll, I'll segue us in. First match. <laughs> Uh, we kick off first night with uh, the United States Championship match with the man John Cena. I guess that's not his name. Sorry. Yeah, I, I was, I was gonna say the man, the myth, the legend head. John Cena okay. versus the future A-Town Down Austin Theory who goes out there and in 11 minutes retains his title. So I think that Austin Theory needed to win. Um, yeah, no reason. No, no reason, reason for John, because I, I heard people were insinuating that John could win. And then on WrestleMania Raw the next night or two nights after, he could drop it. But that would serve no purpose. There would be no point, And Austin Theory would just get buried even further. So I think that this match was fine. It was a little bit on the slow side where the, for a moment there, there wasn't much happening. But... Cena's kind of at that stage in his career where he's putting people over. And uh, I sort of, in a jocular way, I made this comment about how now all it takes is one finisher to put him down when four years ago, four spears, 10 F5s would not, would not get the 16 job done. 16 German suplexes. Yeah. So, <laughs> but this match, like, 
it, the the right person won. Yeah. And I think that's all that matters. That is that is something that I appreciate about John, even though John um, went, the route, went the route of the hypocrite, as he may have uh, referred to it several years ago, um, is that he, he does come back and he generally do, helps do the right thing for the story, for the business. Yeah. Um, like even back in December when he came back for, I forget what the actual like the tag celebration match. was for the tag match. Yeah. It served its purpose. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, he comes out and he does what needs to be done. Uh, so God bless John. The right, the right man won, like you said, Austin Theory with the yes. A town down. I don't know how he says it. And also make sure to pick up your copy of WWE 2K23 featuring the man himself. John Cena! Unless if you have 2K22, just stick to 2K22 because it's copy-paste, same thing. Anyway, uh, so unfortunately I uh, didn't see this next match, so I'm going to leave this one up to you a little bit. Uh, oh. The Men's WrestleMania Showcase Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match, 8 minutes where the Street Profits go over. Braun Strowman and Ricochet, Alpha Academy, and the Viking Raiders. Yeah, this match, I guess for, it was fine. I Nothing really in particular stuck out. Uh, Street Profits, I f predicted would win. Because um, I think that Montez Ford especially has been on fire. And I think that they've kind of been flirting with that idea of letting him go solo and sort of do his thing. But I will just say that one person that I feel like I hope gets a push is Chad Gable. Because he's also been showing like little signs of being able to have a great match with Cody and like having that charismatic side of him, you know, take over. So this match, again, it was just for the sake of kind of like back in the day, they would do money in the bank to squeeze those extra competitors yeah. who didn't have a match. It's fine. It was a, it was it was what it was, a showcase match. And I think that the right um, people that needed to win won being the Street Profits. Now, I, I, I know we're talking about WrestleMania, but I'm just going to reference because Raw was to, uh, to, uh, Raw's done as of the, night, the yeah. filming of this. Um, we did have the Street Profits come out and they challenged um, the winners of the tag team title match that we will talk about. Um, and so obviously we're not jumping right into any sort of split off, but to your to your point, I think that Chad Gable still has a decent amount of potential. I, I, I don't know how old he is. Um, I don't think he's like exceptionally young, but strangely enough, our our overall roster has I think a higher average yeah. age than the a attitude ever did. Definitely, uh, Chad could definitely step in if they may, if they took the shush gimmick away a little bit <laughs> yeah. or like cooled it off a little yeah. bit, and he could fulfill a ver a similar role to what Kurt was. Yes, just from an athleticism Athlete, uh, yep. standpoint, and Montez, I don't think he's quite the i don't think he's quite the rock but he is a very i was literally a, thinking of the rock as yeah but he's a very charismatic dude and you can pull him out of this tag match even if it's only for a, a or the, out of the tag team even for a little while and he could potentially challenge uh probably theory for the for united the states title, title. Yeah, that's fair and that could give you that first step toward him be becoming a viable single star yeah. um i do think even though Angelo Dawkins is not as charismatic or as microphone uh, privy yeah. as Montez is, I think if they can find a way, both could become viable players so that he doesn't get left behind. Right, which yeah. That part would suck. But, no, uh, good good on the Street Profits, the, the most viable team out of the group. Yes. Uh, moving on, we got uh, the marquee match of Seth freaking yes. Rollins versus Logan Paul. Uh what an interesting match this was. Um lot of lot of beef between Logan and Seth. Um Seth g gives a speech. Seth wins. I didn't say that part, I don't think. But Seth goes over Logan Paul after um weeks and weeks and weeks of just um talking crap talking big game and knocking him out with the titanium plate in his yeah, fist yeah the pins mm -hmm. um that's how he that got works. pinned at mania <laughs> get it anyway 
Um, so you have Logan Paul take the fall here. He's no longer undefeated. I think he was technically undefeated. No, well, he, he lost he, to he, Roman. So, oh, you're right. He, I forgot that that match happened. We'll talk about him later. Uh, so, yeah, I'm glad. This is one of those things where you put you put the guy so far behind the eight ball that he has to be the winner. Yeah. So Seth does. It, Seth should have won from a storyline. Definitely. Um, I thought that this match would have been the match of the night, and it just. Night one, I feel like when it comes to match quality, didn't really deliver, give or take the tag team match as the main event. Yeah. Um, this was fine for what it needed to be. I think it it was a perfect way to have Seth be at Mania. Um, Logan Paul can go in the ring. I will just say that. I know some people find his... The dude's athletic. He's athletic. Outside of that, he may be controversial for everything that he's done, but I will say from bell to bell, this guy can go, and I can appreciate that. So, yeah, I think Seth definitely needed to win. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell he was wearing. <laughs> uh, and what I'll chime in with on this one, uh, I, me I mentioned this before we started recording, but I don't know who KSI is. I don't yeah, know. I, either. I don't know who he is. I don't care who he is. Um, Corey Graves, I believe, was the one who was blowing up, going, "That's KSI." Great. I don't, I don't need whoever the hell this dude is, the founder of Prime Energy Drink. Is it an energy drink? Yeah. I don't need him here. I like God bless Logan. Like I said, athletic. Barely need him here. I don't need his buddies. Uh, <laughs> They're all in their prime. And in KSI's case, literally. Um. And so, then we go into the, I almost said women's tag match, which is not right. Kind of, but well, not. It, yeah. Sorry, tag title match, yeah, which yeah. is not right. Um, where we saw the return of legends, Trish, Patricia Stratus. Fear. Uh, Amy Lita Dumas. Re Rebecca Be Becky Lynch Quinn. Quinn. Harley. I'm, I'm just going to boil it back. Trish, Lita, and Becky. Versus Damage Control, uh, Bailey, Dakota Kai, EO, Sky. Uh, 14 minutes, the Legends and Becky go over. Um, look, Damage Control's not, I mean, they're, they're, they're all talented women. It's not really clicking with me anymore. Yeah. And I think that it's because we didn't, we never pulled the trigger on them, other than the tag, other than the tag titles. But then we didn't do anything with those. Um, so... Yeah, and we talked about the rumors that Trish may have turned on Becky and Lita. Obviously, that didn't happen here. But I also floated the idea to you that maybe we stretch this match to backlash. That's where you do the turn, and then we can do whatever the hell they were planning to do with Trish, Lita, and Becky after yeah. that. But uh, thoughts? My sentiments exactly. Damage control, I can appreciate it for what it was or what they intended it to be, bringing three people in and trying to get something going and also kind of a, a change of change of direction for Bailey too instead of just kind of being like the singles competitor having a like a faction under her belt. But I'm just, you're right. I mean, what was also so random to me was putting the belts on Becky and Lita and not defending them at WrestleMania. Yeah. I was almost in favor of Lita and Becky versus Dakota and um, Io, and then you can do a singles match of Trish versus Bailey. I I think we already had a full card, but what I could what we we haven't done anything. One of my favorite matches. We, I think we've talked about this before. Was the six man match for the WWF Championship, where it was I I always forget who it was Undertaker Rock and somebody versus um, Vince. Shane oh, the and, King of the Ring match. Yeah, yeah, and I just thought it was uh, I thought it was silly, but I thought that it was a fun concept because there's that level of like <gasps> uh, unpredictability. Oh. Yeah, because then you ultimately got the Rock uh, countering the Mac elbow uh, into the Rock bottom and him winning the winning the belt. Yeah. And you could have kind of done a similar thing here, and you could have even then used that as your catalyst for the turn for a Trish turn, and just done this all here, where you have whoever wins this match wins the tag belts. Yeah. And then maybe Trish takes the fall to to Bailey, and then at Backlash you can do this this yeah. thing, or uh, 
like maybe Lita gets pissed at Trish, like this was my chance to come back and win a belt and you ruined it. And that ends up causing a triple threat match between Becky, Lita, Trish at Backlash. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, we didn't do it. So, um, but yeah, but a lot of talented, a lot of talented women in that match. So good, yeah, it was, it was that. your legends coming back. Feel good moment of WrestleMania. So yeah. Next up, we had the Battle of the Mysterios. Uh, Ray, Raymond goes over Dominic, and a uh, lot, lot of interesting things here as well. Uh, Snoop Dogg driving Ray out in the low rider. The I I thought that was I, I thought that was neat. The little homage the li- to Eddie. Yeah, the little Viva La Raza. Yeah. Um, Dominic with the Dominic sort of doing the homage to the old WCW gear of his father. Oh, that, is that what it was? I th- I'm pretty sure because when was, he debuted, was, that's that's what he was wearing, like the body armor type yeah. of thing. Um, but yeah, I think because he also had the purple mask. Um, but prison, the prison dom nonsense. <laughs> um, and the, I think this, I think this match went pretty st- pretty straight laced, didn't it? Or Bad Bunny got involved at some point. Bad Bunny took the chain away because Judgment Day was around the ring. Oh yeah, yeah, that's and then right. the they slap all, from the mother. Out. So like there was elements in the match but i'm glad that ray won because like this is the part where they say like when a superstar does a good job of doing their job because like dominic was kind of at that point where i'm like i hope that your father knocks you out which seemed to be the case with most of the people in the audience um and and then he throws he throws the drink in alaya's face yeah um Mama Mysterio slaps him. Yeah. Um, but no, this is another instance. This is one of the um, admittedly uh, few instances, I think. No, we had a decent number of them. Where the right person won. At least on night one. Yeah, t- I will. I think I told you that up until the triple threat of night two, everybody that I thought needed to win won. Like, there, there was a right person to win for each of these matches. And up until that point... Um, everybody who needed to win won. Yeah, and so especially after you have Dominic and Rhea and and the the other Judgment people um, bully him as much as they did for yeah. so long to finally have Ray get the payback. get the the payback get the one up. Uh, that was the correct choice with this match. So yeah. it was fine. It it did what it was supposed to do. Um, again, Raw having already played, uh, it seems like we are now kind of building toward uh, this LWO. Uh, restructure versus Judgment Day for Backlash in Puerto Rico. Um, okay, I'm hope I I, I kind of not not that Judgment Day needs to disband, but I'm kind disband, but I'm kind of hoping that's the end of the Mysterio involvement yeah. with each other, just because it's been going on so damn long. <laughs> um, but that brings us to um. I, I think it was a, a pretty solid match. Um, I know that we are individually not the greatest fans of Charlotte Flair collectively. But brings us to Rhea Ripley versus uh, Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. And Rhea Ripley finally gets that much-deserved win over Charlotte. Rip them, wrap them. Because, like, it, it, I think it was almost one of those situations back at 36 where you kind of felt like that was the, the downfall. Well, I I think building up to that match, it was sort of the it was her, the equivalent for Rhea as that Royal Rumble before 30, I think, with Roman. After they eliminated Brian and you had Batista and it was becoming very clear that Batista was going to be the winner. Yeah. And Roman was there, and that's when people were organically kind of like, well, shit, let Roman be, let yeah. anybody but Batista, um, before they full out turned on him. But it was sort of the same thing, I think, with Rhea. Everyone was like, yeah, Rhea, beat Charlotte. This can be your ascension back at 36. Yeah. And they didn't do it. And now we're here, and I, I, I think that the crowd, the circumstances, um, the, I, I guess the brutality, considering she g- genuinely beat the shit out of uh, Charlotte during this match, <laughs> dropped her right on her face. That was that was bad. Um, but it was a it was a strong overall performance by both women, and having Rhea 
finally get to ascend, uh, I, I'm happy to see where she goes. I don't understand her place with this title in the Judgment Day. Which is another reason why like, I almost want Judgment Day... I almost want Judgment Day to also end at Backlash and just whoosh, wash our hands of this. Because then that frees her up to do whatever she needs to do. And then maybe we do kind of what I suggested with AEW a while back where now we kind of cycle out Damien, Finn, and Dominic for a minute. Or, like, because Dominic is still kind of prominent, shuffle him into something else, but move the others out of the way to bring somebody else. Yeah. Like, LA Knight could get a little bit more TV time. Or, nah, I'm not going to say Bobby. Bobby gets plenty of time normally. But also, we don't know where we're going with the whole Endeavor thing, which is not the point right now. But there's a lot of factors coming into place. Yeah. Um, then, uh, sorry, thoughts, because I talked that entire time. <laughs> I pretty much agree. Um, nothing in this match particularly stood out to me. Um, again, the right person won. It was Rhea's time, and she, I think, has been the the women's superstar that has picked up the most momentum yeah. out of all women superstars over this last year, dare I say. Because essentially you look at the rest of your roster, Liv, maybe a close second. Yeah. Um, but Rhea was kind of the one person that everybody, she's supposed to be a heel and everybody loves her. Yeah. So that might be a sign of things to come. But I wouldn't mind if Dominic stays with Rhea. You can still kind of have that like when she goes in for her like title reign, yeah. Dominic can still be like a managerial role and kind of be there for her and maybe even help her pick up a few victories. But the rest of the Judgment Day, I do agree with you. We can pretty much disband it and then just kind of move on. But yeah, no, it was it was fine for what it was. I, so, real quick, something I did think was funny, I don't know if you saw this, was um, somebody tweeted a picture, a picture from the Hall of Fame and it was Dominic, Rhea, and Buddy... And then he got swapped out with Damien? No, no, no. It, it was just at because they were all sitting next to each other because Rhea and Buddy are obviously actually yeah, together. Yeah. And then you had that. And somebody tweeted that and Buddy responded saying Aaliyah was actually next to him. So the fact that you had these two fake relationships with the real people dating right in the middle was just, it was just kind of funny. Yeah, it was. Um, but then after that, uh, we moved. On to um, ma match of the night. I'm just kidding. Um, but the oh segment with The Miz and Snoop Dogg, which ultimately leads to Pat McAfee in another surprise appearance, coming out to face The Miz in an impromptu match. And he uh, beats him after something. After some involvement from George Kittle of the San Francisco 49ers, tight end. Sure. And... Uh, yeah, I I don't I I told I told you before we got on. God bless Pat McAfee. I don't. I th I think his returns, these little returns like this in the Royal Rumble, are really more for Michael Cole than it is for the fans. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this um, glorious three minute match? I briefly told you this before we got on the air is that this seemed very much to me like they were trying to live off their glory from last year because uh, Pat was mimicking a lot of the same spots, jumping off the turnbuckle, landing on his feet, doing a superplex, doing the punt. Um, and I will just throw this in there because this relates to night one and night two, but I guess I'll just throw it in there to get it out of the way. Bobby Lashley was screwed really bad um, to the point where I don't even know if you saw this, but on SmackDown when he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, I believe it was Kathy Kelly that was doing an interview with him backstage. And you can tell that Bobby was like trying to be content but there was almost like something else going on. Yeah. And even when he walks off the screen, you know that thing where the person who's got the microphone kind of just looks on? Yeah. You can tell Kathy Kelly was like bummed out. Yeah. Cause so it seems like everybody was just hoping that Bobby would get something at WrestleMania. And you could have easily dropped these night one and night two both had these impromptu matches with the Miz. You could have easily dropped one of those on any given night 
And I even brought up the idea, too, that Bobby could, like, come to the ring and go, I'm getting my WrestleMania moment. I will put this trophy on the line. I'm issuing an open challenge for anybody that wants to get out here and try to beat me. And you could have, you could have easily had a moment right there. So the fact that we didn't have time for Bobby, we didn't have time for any of that. But we had time for this silly little segment followed by a three-minute match. It's very pathetic. So yeah. I'll leave it at that. But I could care less for this. This is one of those things where it's like, in the history books, it's like, oh, by the way, there was this one match with Pat McAfee for three minutes. It's not going to be remembered as, you know, with the uh, with the other matches, obviously. So Yeah, and going off the Bobby Lashley thing, I'm just going to make this real real quick. I don't know if I've heard any updates or seen any updates or if there have been any updates, but I, I hope Bray Wyatt is okay. From a health standpoint, because I know that, that was the the, the kind original, of ru yeah. rumor going around, is that he was uh, dealing with some sort of illness of some capacity. Uh, so, uh, well wishes if he's still dealing with some sort of long-term illness that needs to be taken care of. But uh, then we move on to what I called Match of the Weekend. I know you have a slightly varying uh, opinion, but that one's on uh, tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> considering we'll talk about both. But this is the main event of night one where we see the uh, Uso Penitentiary, Jay and Jimmy, uh, defending the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And we get uh, what a lot of people assumed was uh, the end to chapter one of the 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 supreme storybook ending for WrestleMania this year. And uh yeah, I talked about how I felt like the ending could have been um a little the actual tweaked. ending could have been tweaked to be just a little bit more fluid, but this match did its purpose. All four men went out there. They put on a hell of a show and uh you see Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn walk away with the win, which is um what we were expecting, what we were hoping for, most of us. I can't speak for everybody, but that was a it. It, it was a good match, and I I was happy with that. Yeah. What were What was your take on this one? Um. Yeah, this was kind of the part one, as you alluded to earlier, of the bloodline against Kevin Owens, Sammy, and Cody. Um. It's one of those things where this match was fine. Uh, again, the, the the right people won, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Um, we will sort of allude back to this, but I feel like the Sami Zayn stuff was almost put on hold because of what could have potentially happened on night two. Because it was a very unique situation where over the last year, when you look at it, Sami Zayn went, went from a gimmick match with Johnny Knoxville to becoming the most beloved superstar on the roster. And it's just a little unfortunate that with Cody coming back and it's like, it's kind of like the Austin and Rock thing where it's like, usually you have one superstar that steers the boat, that steers the ship in each, you know, generation of wrestling. And it just seems like it was at a time where here's this guy Cody who's come back and he's going to be in that position. But there's this guy, Sammy, who's been climbing up the ranks. Yeah. So I think that this match was fine. It was exactly what it needed to be. I would have maybe shaved off 10 super kicks. Because um, there, like, there was a moment where I felt like Kevin Owens would get knocked out of the ring. He would come back, eat a super kick. Sammy would get knocked out of the ring. He would come back, eat a super kick. Yeah. But it was fine for what it was. Very well deserved a moment. And actually a lot of people were very quick to point out that a tag team match main event at WrestleMania for the first time in 38 years because the first main event of WrestleMania 1 was the last time where a tag team match closed out of WrestleMania. So there you go. Feel good moment. The right people won. I'm very intrigued to see where things go from here for Sami Zayn and for Kevin. But um, no, yeah, it was fine for what it was. The only thing I want to say about night one before we jump into night two is that uh, the overall, my overall problem with night one and the, the way that these things are structured is the fact that if I bought a ticket for night one and then got this show, 
I would have been disappointed mm-hmm. if I had bought a night for just night one. Yeah. Even though the ending was great. But it, it's one of those things like, just using this as a weird weird little example, which is not at all relevant to a wrestling podcast. I never finished reading the first Harry Potter book because I started reading it and then it got boring. So I never got to the end. Mm-hmm. I read every other Harry Potter book from beginning to end, but not the first one. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it could have, th- that book could have had the best ending ever, but because the start, the start of it was so meh, I never got to see it. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing here. Like the everything else is just meh. It's okay. It's all right. But was it enough to necessarily keep you engaged to get to the end on its own? Not really. Yeah. But uh, going from that, we jump in. We we take the rest of the night off. We do a nice little press conference with Rhea and the tag champs, and then we uh, show up the following night and we kick it off with Brock Lesnar versus Omos. Uh, and the Homo Sapiens. That was almost clever. I mean, that's what they're calling them. Get it? But, uh, anyway, four, four, five minutes. It's a five minute match. And, uh, Brock Lesnar ultimately beats Omos, even though Omos, um, gets in a decent amount of offense. Yeah, it started off in a, it didn't start off with your typical Brock Lesnar match-esque type of way where he just like comes from behind and just German suplexes you F five call it a day. He like almost got some offense in, but then everything I think was eventually leading up. Cause like there's a moment where he picks him up for the F five collapses. It's like, Oh no, he can't do it. But then they just kind of build to it. He F fives um matches over. Yeah. I thought it was fine for what it was great way to kind of get the crowd going for night two. Yeah. And it gives Brock Lesnar uh, the rest of the night off. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, then we go into the women's WrestleMania Showcase Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match, yes. uh, which, as we established, is the exact same positioning on the card as the men's version. Um, we get Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia and Shotzi, and Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville. The What I will say... Is that from a from a logical standpoint, the team that won, Ronda and Shayna, is the team that makes sense winning, because the other three are all patchwork teams slapped together. Yeah, versus the the team of the two like prize fighters who actually have a history with each other. Yeah, that would be like putting Edge and Christian in a match with just. I, I can't even think of enough names off the top of my head, but just like three teams of random ass people from the from the roster. Yeah. And you go, geez, I wonder who's gonna win. Yeah. But uh the build up to this match, shoddy at best. Garbage. Not Shotzi, shoddy. Get it? Um and then we get to the match, we do all of this. It almost sounds like there's tag team title implications to this match from the way that the announcers were talking. And then Ronda Rousey kind of goes MIA for a bu- for a chunk of the match, only to come back and win it with her little arm bar. Yeah. And then, throwing back again once more to the Raw after WrestleMania, we then kind of throw that out the window and give a title match, a title qualifying match to Liv Morgan and Raquel, Raquel. Rodriguez. Yeah. So we definitely could have just restructured this or done something i don't know but eh, didn't really care for this one yeah i didn't either um i thought that out of everybody in this match Liv probably deserved a better position on the card which at that point kind of takes me back for a moment i would have almost been okay with Trish and Lita not coming back. And instead of that, like Becky's partners could have been a Liv Morgan and insert third person here um, going up up against damage control. Like I would have almost loved that instead of having, God bless them, because I love them both, Trish and Lita coming back and taking up two spots yeah. on an active roster. Just saying. Um, Agreed. 
Moving on to the next match. This is the one that you pegged as the match of the weekend. Yes. My only counterpoint was that it was a great brawl. The other one I felt was a better match. Both of them stellar overall quality, though. Because with this one, we go into the triple threat match between Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre. Long-awaited triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship. And it was a slobber knocker. Oh, I thought you were going to say banger. No, I was going to say slugfest. We can go back. We can do that. <laughs> Rewind it. It, it was what? all of it. It wow. was a slugfest. It was all a right. slobber knocker. I'll tell with you then. I'm not going not gonna to give you the, the, the other sound bite. Anyway... Great match. Um, Gunther goes over to retain, as uh, I felt was the appropriate decision here as well. Sheamus, Drew, both stellar talents as well. I love Drew, but he didn't need to win this match, at least not today. Sheamus uh, didn't need to win it on this day either. But the number of near falls and moments where you were like, <gasps> nope. Was I think it was was like just the right amount. It was. I will say towards the end, it was a little bit finisher heavy, because I may be wrong, but I think we got like a broke kick, kick out. We got a claymore kick out, and I I may be wrong, but I think we got one more where it was broke kick kick out. Um, I I've like maybe. second half of the match, it was very very heavy on that, and like it wasn't like. Finish your hits, person A pins, person B, person C comes in and, like, you know, stops it. You know, person B would just kick out. Yeah. So. Which I think was to to highlight how much these three men wanted it and how tough how they How tough were. they are. Fair point. But, yeah, no, I, 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 I can't remember exactly, but I, th I think you're right. I think there was a brogue kick. Uh, Claymore. I can't remember on who. Probably Drew. Then Claymore on Sheamus, I think. Might have been a powerbomb, too, at one point, and somebody kicked out. Well, we did have... Uh, I, maybe. But, I mean, you do also kind of get to the end of the match where you, that's what you do. Yeah. And I think that's kind of the thing, is this match went on for 16 minutes, which you almost don't expect for an Intercontinental title match nowadays. And then you get to a point where it's almost like, all right, well, it's been 12 minutes. Uh, I guess the next finisher is going to win. And then you do it, and they kick out, and you go, maybe not. I guess the next one, and the next one happens, and they kick out again. Yeah. And you build up to that moment where uh, I, th I thought that they ended the match very well with the Gunther hits a powerbomb. Sheamus gets basically rolled out of the ring. He hits the other power bomb, and that's how he picks up the win. So yeah. he, he basically ends up dominating both of them. Both of them, yeah. It was very much a 2K finish yeah. to the match. <laughs> but it, it worked with the, with these three guys. These three guys have been very solid, solidly booked. And I told you off air how underappreciated I think Sheamus was and how underrated he is because he's been – people forget he's been in WWE since like 2008. 2009 yeah. it's it, it's been a long stretch so if you're if you can still go out there at this point in your career and have matches like that i mean that just tells you everything you need to know about sheamus but this match was awesome match quality everything i predicted that gunther would win some people were flirting with the idea that sheamus could maybe win and finally win the one title that's eluded him his whole career we might get that some other day, but I think that this was a great match, and definitely Gunther deserves every bit of it. So. Yeah, she Sheamus eventually claiming the belt. That one, I, I, I will dare say, can kind of happen anytime. It's yeah. not one of those it needs to happen right now situations. There was some that needed to happen on night two, and it didn't. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, then we go on to the Raw Women's Championship match. Bianca Belair versus Asuka. Asuka. Uh, Bianca Belair picking up the win after a also 16-minute match and a uh, uncomfortable-looking KOD. <laughs> um, I was I was strong I was strongly in the Asuka camp on this one. I was too. Uh, I I appreciate Bianca. I think that she has. Um, I don't think she has the same, not staying power, that's not the right phrase for it, but I don't think she has the same staying power as, like, Roman has had to justify 
not potentially to just switch, shaking up the belt. Yeah. However, I guess may, maybe I know she she met, talked about it a little bit during the press conference of I think this is the new streak. Maybe that's something the company kind of wants to toy with with her is having her undefeated at WrestleMania yeah. for however long she's around. But if that's the case, I would like her to not have the belt at WrestleMania anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I it was actually at this point where I felt like slowly whoever didn't need to win won. Um, match quality wise, this match was great. A lot of spots, uh, almost sort of like a Ricky Steamboat and Macho Man heavy match where it was spot after spot after spot until we get to the end of the match. It was great. I think that Asuka should have won because we need her to kind of like kickstart this new He'll turn this new gimmick change in her career. Um, I don't have a problem with Bianca. I think that every time that she wrestles, you know, she brings it. Everything that she does have. Um, She's the EST after all. Yeah. And I mean, I, I can't argue with it. Like ever since uh, a lot of people are very quick to say that Roman highlighted his third consecutive mania. Well, Bianca was in her third consecutive match at a WrestleMania involving the title in some capacity. And all three times, like, these matches have been great. Yeah. So, uh, bless them both. I just feel like Asuka needed to win this match, but we'll have to see what happens. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll touch back on this when we get a couple matches later, but... Uh... Then we go into what was intended, seemingly, to be Shane... Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. <laughs> the Miz and Snoop Dogg come out for, again, much like night one, their little bit yeah. in the middle of the show. And uh, Snoop Dogg tries to set up another match for Miz, and we get, instead of Bobby Lashley, <laughs> a surprise return from Shane McMahon. And Shane comes out and he does this little, like, Shane McMahon stuff. shuffle, yeah. yeah. He almost like he almost eats it at one point when he first gets in the ring and he's doing the the little backwards move. It almost looks like he he like missteps and like falls down, which unfortunately turns out to be foreshadowing. Yeah, because the match goes on and like I'm assuming this two this two minute and twenty seconds is all of it because the Miz and Shane start the match. Yeah. They try to do the little hop over uh, rhythm that we see so many people do. But Shane, who I'm not going to look up his age right now, but he's not a spring chicken anymore, uh, tries to do a leapfrog. And when he comes down, you see his leg just go out. Yeah. And at the time, it's not super clear what happens. I assumed that he had torn his ACL because it looked like a wobbly leg. Um, turns out, apparently, uh, torn quad, much yeah. like his father. Um, and his brother-in-law. Well, the um, family. And so Shane is being tended to. They call an audible, and this is where it becomes Snoop Dogg versus The Miz, where Snoop punches him twice and hits the Snooples Snoop. elbow. Um, <laughs> the Snoop Dogg rendition of the People's Elbow. Um, I know Snoop's not a wrestler, and I know Snoop is also not young. Um, but watching him bounce off the rope was really funny to me because he kind of walked over and just sort of leaned against it and then yeah. walked over, did it again. And then he did like the jumping elbow drop. Um, and it was, none of it was necessary. It was quirky. It was goofy. Um, if it was any other, if it was any other raw, it probably would have been like, <laughs> but it was also to cover up for the fact that Shane had just fucked himself up. Yeah, Snoop, um, I think Triple H commented on this on the press conference. I think that was just the moment where instead, like, Snoop just kind of, like, picked it up. Where he's like, okay, Shane's hurt. How do we get out of this? And I think he just just had a match, like yeah. an impromptu match. It, it, it is curious as to whether or not Snoop was like, hey, Miz, uh, we sh should we do something? And Miz goes, yeah, uh, uh, hit me. Or, like... I don't. I don't know. That's don't that's know. that's what I'm assuming happened because Triple H was very. He said that if it w if that would have been another superstar, they would have maybe been like, "What do we do now?" Yeah. But like Snoop was very quick to be like, "Okay, well, 
you know, get yeah. down, I'll cover you, we'll do this, that's yeah. it. And we've established that the Miz, the Miz admittedly has become one of the probably most professional guys in this company. Definitely, yeah. So the the fact that under under these two dudes watch and the fact that Snoop, Snoop has such a good relationship with this company at this point, yeah. despite his cousin uh, being elsewhere. Yeah. Um, this they they did what they could with a already bad segment to keep it from getting worse, but, which didn't need to happen in the first place, yeah. and takes us back to the Bobby Lashley stuff that I said earlier. But exactly, but yes, so yeah, cool. Uh, then we move on to the Hell in a Cell match, which I think everybody um, probably expected a little bit more from, and I don't know if Finn taking a ladder to his face um, changed the match in any capacity, but. Edge goes over the demon Finn Balor um, after a very strange in- entrance. I don't know what this shiny mirror mask was that Edge was wearing when uh, he came out. It was cool. Um, but he comes down. They get in the cage. The match starts. A lot of weapons. A um, lot of color-coded weapons. Color-coded weapons. Yeah. And far too many kendo sticks. Um, I brought up the point to you that if they left it as... A red chair, Edge pulls out a red chair, Finn pulls out a purple kendo stick, and, like, you, that's it, I would have been okay with it. But the fact that every other weapon that was pulled out, whether it purple was... Purple table. Purple table, <laughs> more purple kendo sticks, more red chairs. Red kendo sticks. They had, they, everything. But, yeah, the whole, the whole thing, it, it was, it was, there was a, a weird campiness to it. Yeah. And I know that we we also talked about the fact that they they've been doing more and more of these weird little like sponsor gimmicky matches like the the what the hell was it called the Mountain Dew Pitch, Pitch Black, Black match, match yeah at the Rumble, Rumble. was it the Rumble Rum- or Chamber I, I think whenever it was, Rumble, it was. Yeah. time bleeds together and then we get here and we got our cinnamon toast crunch match with uh, the Mysterios we got the Pope's exorcism. Uh, Right? Yeah, the Pope's, yeah, Pope's Exorcist, Exorcist yeah. uh, match with these guys. TurboTax. TurboTax. Uh, look, good for Endeavor getting all the, re- the ad revenue that they're going to get, I guess. But um, anyway, Edge goes over as, again, like we kind of steer back a little bit to like who should have won based on the story at hand. I'm hoping we're done. Yeah. I'm ho- like, that's the whole point of the Hell in a Cell match is finish it this was essentially a one-year story because if you think about it last year's wrestlemania is where edge aligned himself with damian priest yeah and so like that was the beginning of the judgment day this was very much like the end of these two like battling it out yeah i just felt like balor could have used the win Uh because now edge goes into the into the you know he rides off into the sunset and finn is just there and he's got this loss over edge as Demon King, by the way. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, hasn't the Demon King lost a couple of matches at this point? He's only lost two, but like it's one of those things where if we're bringing the Demon King back, let's put let's restore some value to it, especially with Triple H in charge. And like, what was the point of Edge winning? It was. I mean, it was just to put a pin. Hopefully, to just put a pin in the story and move on. That's what I'm hoping. I, it's much the same as I was saying with the Mysterios. I'm hoping that after Backlash, we're done yeah. with, with not only Judgment Day, but with Ray and Dom. Yeah. Yeah. Those are their names. But also, I'm hoping that's done. Uh, so it's kind of the same thing here. But it, it was an okay match. Um, uh, you, 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 you could see the table that Finn ended up jumping through. Pre, you could see the pre-saw. Which uh, was kind of funny. Uh, I recently saw a like TikTok video or whatever it was of a match on the Indies where somebody um, w- set their opponent up on a table and the the table gave way before they jumped before off. Before they top, jumped off it, yeah. top turnbuckle, and I almost thought it was going to be funny if that had happened here. It did not, but uh, yeah, it, it's it is what it is. Eighteen minutes with two talented guys. Unfortunate side of it was Finn got busted open with the ladder. Yeah. And then they had to prob- probably do a little bit of like, Ooh, let's figure this out. He had to get staples mid match, is what I was what I read. Yeah. So. Which I, I, I don't know if that's common pra- practice, but it worked. And you saw that he was, he was good to go. Yeah. Like he was back in it. But uh, it is what it is. 
But that match leads directly into our main event. Oh, man. The marquee match of WrestleMania 39 weekend. Much talked about, much buzzed, much... Hmm. Roman Reigns... For all the wrong reasons. ...with Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa defeats Cody Rhodes by pinfall for to retain the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, thus putting a pin in the finishing of the story. I'm going to get started with this one, if you don't mind, because I just want to get this out there. Yeah. I, I don't think, no, I don't think I have ever been as bummed out over a decision for a wrestling match as I was for this. I know that like sometimes jokingly and sometimes on a serious note, I will bring it up. I thought I was upset when they made the decision to end the streak. And now looking at it, I am almost ready to forgive that. And sort of look at the silver lining for that. This was criminal. Yeah. Because, and I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's okay. He might get the title at a SummerSlam or somewhere else down the road. Huh, road. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, but if there was a time to pull that trigger, it was last night. Yeah. Because all the stars had aligned. And this match had one thing that I think the last few WrestleManias didn't have. And that's a natural, good story. Yeah. You can look at Brock and Ro Ro uh, Roman from last year. Not really much of a story. Yeah. Kind of just a continuation of what we've seen in previous yeah, years. The story was these guys have fought a bunch. And we're going to do it one more time. <laughs> um... Everything was set in stone, and I I love Triple H, but there are certain moments where you have to be able to call out the BS when you hear it. Yeah. You and I were very briefly talking about how we heard the press conference and someone, which bravo to this reporter, whoever it was, because they asked the question in a very professional and very stern way about making that decision of having Roman retain and dragging this thing along just for the sake of having four digits instead of three for Roman's reign. Yeah. Um, and Triple H quickly says, oh, we were just closing off one chapter and going into the next. And I told you before we got on the air that you can make that argument about not just WrestleMania, any other wrestling match in the history of wrestling matches. Yeah. I brought up a few examples. I said, WrestleMania 30 with Daniel Bryan. We could have had Bryan lose and said, oh, we're still telling you a story. The story just isn't finished yet. You could go back to any one of Austin's matches when he won the title and said, we're not going to have him win. We're going to continue this, this story. We're going to tell the next chapter. Yeah. There is a time and a place for everything. And I truly believe, and when you look at it, Cody comes back at last year's Mania has that match at Hell in a Cell with Seth. Best match out of the year. Goes away, comes back and wins the Rumble. He's got all this momentum. And here we go. It's about Dusty. It's about him. And you have someone who, as he said, rattled a few cages for a few years. Only to have Roman win. Yeah. And my question now, if not Cody, which I think that it is Cody, but just not at Mania. They're probably going to do it at a SummerSlam. If not Cody, then who? I, I don't know. Cody is your next is your next face of the company. I'm I'm throwing that out there. Yeah. If you look at the way he talks, the way he dresses, the way he carries himself, everything about him screams face of the company. Yeah. If not him, you tell me who else. I don't necessarily have anybody. Um, especially like the fact that we we're now also through the Raw after Mania. Where you normally get a lot of, like, surprises. Yeah. And there wasn't anything. They didn't bring somebody up. They didn't do anything of merit. They didn't, um, they didn't even start. They didn't even start the next leg of Roman's story. Not really. I mean, you have... <laughs> spoilers. Sorry, I'm going to get ahead of this at this point. You have, um, Cody 
slated to be in a tag match alongside Brock Lesnar against Roman and Solo Sokoa, and then Brock jumps Cody. So that's like the next the next chapter of Cody's story. But what the hell's Roman going to do? Is he going to rot is he going to go like unless we're going to crumble the bloodline in the next like 3 months is him fighting each of them until he oh, ultimately please. fights Cody? I don't know what the hell the, the point is. Now, I, what I will say in the defense of what I just said because now I, like my brain jumped on it and I can't remember if we did this or if we just did the individual things. I would get a kick one month out of watching Roman versus both the Usos in a triple threat. Um, you could even, if you felt real crazy, do a fatal four way with all four of them. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to do that because it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel natural. Yeah. And to your point, you said that, um, it felt like the wrong people started to win at a certain point. No titles changed hands on night two of WrestleMania. Yeah. Which I didn't, I didn't even think about until you told me. Yeah. None. And the normal process there, and that's also the thing is that the normal process on WrestleMania is that you, you aim to send the crowd home happy. happy. And I, I was telling you that I was like, as soon as they did the Samoan spike and then Roman got the pin off the, the boing, boing spear, um, I started to like play th- scenarios in my head or honestly it was as soon as Solo got ejected is when I started to play scenarios where I was like okay well even though The Rock wasn't able to compete in a full match maybe he's still here and there's going to be some sort of angle some sort yeah. of bit that builds still toward Roman versus The Rock at, at some point and so I was anticipating embracing myself for, oh, well, you know what? Maybe we'll have the Usos come out. Kevin and Sammy will stop them. Then Solo will come back out, and he'll be beating the hell out of Cody. And then the Rock Steam will play. The Rock will come down. He'll stop Solo. He'll hit Roman with a rock bottom. Cody hits the crossroads. End of match. Oh, everybody's happy except for Roman, but that still sets up the match. Didn't happen. Roman gets the win. Oh, well, maybe Roman's going to start going up the ramp and we're going to get the Rock's theme and that's going to set up the match for some sometime down the road and the crowd's going to pop for the Rock. Didn't happen. Match uh, the, the show just goes off the air. I was surprised more than disappointed or deflated. I just sat there kind of going, like, internally going, huh, what an interesting choice. And not in a good way. Yeah, just sort of in like a, hmm. It was it was almost like somebody gave you, like a that like you you just sat through dinner and it was it was a fine like it was fine. There were a couple of highlights to the, to the meal and then they bring you dessert and you're like, all right, this looks like a, a nice tiramisu and you take the first bite and it's just bland and you're like. That it's it's food. It's it's edible. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't love it. And it it uh, the, yeah. And then the press conference was a lot of fluff to I think try and I think it was to try and add logic to an illogical trying to explain it to people. Yeah, it was trying yeah. to justify an unjustifiable decision. Yeah, because. Cody, Cody's finishing of the story, I likened it to the season finale thing to you. This, WrestleMania has traditionally been the fresh start. It's like shaking the Etch-A-Sketch. And the raw after WrestleMania is normally when we you start, start making a new, a, new, yeah. a new drawing. Yeah. And we didn't get any call-ups. We didn't get anything fun. We didn't have a title change. And with and and the fact that there were no title changes on night two, you could all if if Oscar and Sheamus had both won, you could almost justify Roman retaining. Not from a story perspective, but from like a if, okay, sure percentage of title changing type. Yeah, of thing. exciting things. statistics. Yeah, from a a perspective of exciting stuff. We did this. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Gave, gave the audience something to be like, ooh, I was there when something interesting happened. As opposed yeah. to, oh, everyone just stayed the same. Yeah. Night two was very status quo. 
night one, at least they did stuff. I would almost argue, and this it would have it would have definitely it would have definitely sold what the game plan was, but maybe not. But if you had just put Roman and and Cody on night one and ended re- night two with the tag match, at least then it would have felt like the overall weekend had the right ending. Yeah, but they didn't. Um. So I don't know what the game plan is. I don't necessarily agree with what they did. I don't know if the Endeavor merger... Because uh, I heard that this this goes back a couple of weeks. I, I, I read that the decision to go with Roman is a couple of weeks old. Yeah, like six weeks old? I, I didn't hear an exact number. Just more than, more than day of. Yeah. And so I don't know if the pending merger what, played a factor where they were like... Well, we don't really want to go with the turncoat, or we don't want to go with the little, the the small dude. We want to go with the 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 box office draw that is Roman Reigns. Or I joked that we're going to get to a point where Brock Lesnar gets the belt, and then they take whoever the hell the UFC champion is, because now they're under the same umbrella. They have those two have a shoot fight, and whoever wins is both champions, and it gives some weird legitimacy to the WWE ch- championship. Due to the fact that an actual fighter fighter has it, but then I guess you could that could cast a dark cloud over the legitimacy of UFC at that point. But who I don't know. Possibilities are endless. I'm not a I'm not in the business deal. Unfortunately. But I'm a screenwriter. <laughs> I think about things from a very cinematic perspective, and this was a this was a bad movie. This was a very <laughs> bad move, and I to, to to give you an idea, everybody that I've spoken to f- shares the same sentiments. My buddy and I, we were driving home from watching the pay per view. He was driving. We were both silent for fifteen minutes. Not one word was exchanged. Yeah, because we were very bummed out. Yeah, trying to process. Did this actually happen? And you're trying to go through all the emotions and go, like, you're, you're almost trying to, like, justify it to yourself. You're trying to explain it to yourself. Yeah. Trying to get a logistical conclusion as to why. Here's, here's, here's my thought on it. I, I told everybody that I was watching with, I said, look, at the end of the day, whether it's 945 days as champion or it's 1,000... Hmm, as champion it really doesn't matter at this point yeah you've had a two and a half year reign you've beaten everybody under the umbrella imaginary statistics should not be driving your storytelling and i think i honestly believe that yesterday's decision was influenced by a number yeah and that's it I, I, i said it to you i said if wrestlemania was two months from now cody wins cody wins (laughs) <laughs> yeah which is which is a positioning thing at that point yeah so um this i i will go on record to say i think this was the worst decision that wwe has has ever made there are things that you can forgive there are things that you can look past and say okay they rectified it after x amount of years but this is one of those things where I think that if Cody won the title even hypothetically tonight on Raw, it's like that window has closed. Yeah. There is a time and a place for everything. And last night was Cody's night. Yeah. And he and Sammy will both probably get a title reign. But they're not going to mean as much as Chamber or WrestleMania would have. Yeah. We almost bought tickets. I was... We almost bought tickets to WrestleMania when they were when they were uh, on sale. When they were on sale, um, we ended up not doing it just budgetary restraints for us personally. Thank but God, in hindsight, we would have been. I yeah, I'm seeing you nod, so I can confirm for both of us. We would have both been wildly disappointed having bought the tickets with how these days went, regardless of if we went one day or two, like. If we'd gone day one, it would have been like, cool. I know, I know, well, I know, like, you're, you're a big Sammy guy. Yeah. 
you would have been hyped about that. But the rest of the show, you probably would have been like, eh, it was fine. Yeah. I'm glad Sammy won, but... Nah, nah, but, nah. yeah. And on night two, it would have been, hey, that triple threat match was dope. Oscar Bianca. <laughs> but that would have been it. But that, that would have been it. That would have been all the good yeah. that we had to say. Yep. And so, huh. And I can't imagine we're the, like, I can't imagine we're the only people who feel that way. I am so happy that you said that because <laughs> um, one of my very good friends, her brothers, went to uh, both nights of WrestleMania. She tells me that they saw two girls actually fighting after WrestleMania because one girl was a Roman Reigns fan <laughs> and the other one was a Cody fan. <laughs> now, I am not at that point where I'm going to fight somebody over this decision, but I just want you to know that's how much weight this has on wrestling fans. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, I guess I, I'm trying to think of a scale for us to judge this off of, but, um, I guess since it was in Hollywood, um, out of five film reels, how many film reels would you give WrestleMania 39? Are we just doing both nights cumulatively or? We're... Yeah, just, yeah, just together. The, the collective experience. I'll give it a th- Three. That's generous. I was gonna do. I, I was probably gonna go lower than I than I, than I should have. Well, here's the but. thing that I'm considering <laughs> is that up until the triple threat, whoever needed to win won. Okay. Which says something. I'll give it a two and a half. That's fair. Because there weren't a ton of great matches. No. There were a couple, but there were not a ton of great ones. Three. And, I mean, there. So there. There is. Six and seven, that's that's 13. There was 13 <laughs> matches. I'm not counting the impromptu mismatches. Yeah. There's 13 matches. Yeah. Out of 13 matches, in my opinion, three delivered. Yeah. Match quality wise. And I, I know you're I know that you are not I the, what I will say about the Roman Cody match personally is that I thought that the match itself up until the finish was entertaining. I know you you and I were eh, on that before we started, but I think that match was solid, but the the booking choice at the end was horrendous. Yeah. Um. So I, I'll based on what you're saying, I'll say three and a half matches were, in in my my opinion, three and a half matches were were solid, but the rest were lukewarm. They were Dull. very they were vanilla Stale. at best. Yeah. Um. And a lot of them didn't do anything to progress and or uh, start a story at a layer. Yeah. And so, just from an overarching, it's a, it's entertainment. From an entertainment standpoint, it was it was subpar. Very. So I would give it. A, I'd give it a two and a half. And uh, it, it, with the foresight of what happened on Raw, eh, I like. I don't feel good. I don't feel. Yeah. Gr- I don't feel good about where we're going. And I, I mentioned in our group chat, I'm more interested in like a morbid curiosity way to see what happens with the restructuring of the company under this merger than I am about the storytelling because I don't have any huge faith in where they're going on the other side. Well, Triple H has been very vocal about we, the WWE, we're not going anywhere. They Well, sh- the company might not be going anywhere, but neither is their stories. <laughs> Neither are their stories. So you know how when you flirt with an idea, but you don't actually think about going through with it? Yeah. Literally last night, as the pyro is going off and Roman raises both titles over his head by the ramp, I literally have a moment where I'm like, I think I'm done with wrestling. (laughs) Or or, uh, specifically, I think I'm done with WWE. And it was this quick thing where, like, I'm like, well, no, I, I can't be done with WWE because WWE is my life. Yeah. Um, But it's just one of those things where it's almost like if one of your parents, yeah, who's your role model, who is someone that you obviously grew up with, and they make a very, very, very bad decision. Yeah which affects your happiness. And you wonder, why didn't you make 
the other decision yeah. that would have led to a better result. Yeah. That's kind of like how I feel with WWE right now. Is that there was... And they knew what was on the line. And everything... Like, all the stars had aligned, if yeah. you ask me. This is one of those moments. Like a, it's, it's almost like a Daniel Bryan type of thing. But the Daniel Bryan thing was a little more off script than this. But, but this, is how, like, this is how we would have felt if Bryan also hadn't lost. Or if he hadn't won. Which, I'm going to be honest with you. It was midday today where I thought, I'm surprised that we got through WrestleMania 30. Yeah. And at no point in time did they make a decision and be like, nah. no, no, <laughs> no, we'll just, we'll just have Randy retain. Like, I'm surprised now in hindsight that yeah. we actually concluded that event with Daniel Bryan walking out as champion. Because I look at a Cody Rhodes who people forget he's not AEW. I mean, he is AEW born and bred. But he's WWE he's born and bred. He's WWE born, born and bred and AEW forged. Yes. And so I think people forget that. Like, oh, AEW. It's like, no, he was in WWE. And to be fair, his first few years were fine with Legacy and all that. he was loyal to this company for a long time. And for him to go out tonight and to take that beating, because that beating was bad. Yeah. The four F5s is yeah. what he ate. And so I'm looking at it now and, and like the torn pec. Any other superstar could have been like, I'm hurt. Yeah. Sin Cara canceled the match with a dislocated finger. finger. <laughs> so, like, it's one of those things where it's like, there comes to a point where when someone proves their loyalty to you and what they're willing to do. You should be rewarding them. <laughs> so, Triple H can keep all of his answers about we're ending that chapter, but this is the chapter that needed to have him winning the championship. Yeah. But to, back to your analogy, instead, our parents slept with the neighbor. <laughs> so, final thoughts? To, I mean, unless you have another uh, sort of viewpoint on something that you want to bring up. No, I mean, I, I, final I, thoughts? I'll, ch I'll change the scale and just say uh, two and a half deflated balloons uh, for WrestleMania 39. Um, I, I would say I'm less, the, the glass is less than half full. If we're, if, if you, if you want to know where my optimism stands about the story on the other side, <sighs> not, not feeling great. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sort of in a weird way. I'm, I'm excited about Brock and Cody. Like yeah, that, that'd that, probably be fun. That uh, that that's something mean that. Anything. Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> that it, hypothetically, if you maybe did it last year, it would have maybe made a little bit sense because we'd be building to this year, where we would have finished the story. <laughs> so, but like the writing is on the wall because you know for a fact that they're doing this to buy time with Cody. Yeah, maybe I'd say to a SummerSlam, which is only a few months away, but. Um, yeah, again, my, my thoughts and conclusion, um, there was a lot of hype around this WrestleMania. I think that it under delivered and it was underwhelming. And there were a lot of very small decisions that could have been made to make the show a whole lot better, especially when it's decisions that's in plain sight. Yeah. Um, I am willing to forgive everything else, but that final match is a crime. <laughs> it's 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 a crime. And, you know, th they do have a lot of misdemeanors, but there are certain moments when you can easily not do the crime and do the right thing. But for the sake of a number, they decided to not do what they needed to do and complete and finish that story. So I guess it sounds like where we're kind of at is that while it doesn't look stellar, we, uh, it's not a stardust pun. While it doesn't look stellar, we want to wish WWE the best 
in their future endeavor. I guess that's not really people power now, is it? Uh, let's bring it home. All the way home. So, there you go, guys. We just uh, reviewed WrestleMania 39 Nights 1 and 2 conclusively. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. I don't know where we're going from here. I don't know what this is going to lead to. It's just one of those things where we're just going to have to watch and find out. But it's not really looking good at the moment, personally. Yeah. So, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Exactly. Yeah! So, what? Yeah! Another missed opportunity, by the way. I thought that would have been a great segment. Anyway, <laughs> um, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. We appreciate you all uh, tuning in. If you made it this far, thank you so much. We appreciate all the support. We appreciate all the views. On behalf of Dan the Man and myself, thank you so much for joining us, and we will catch you all next time.